Success stories are one of our favorite things here at System Improvements, and it's one of the favorite things that our clients like to tell us about. When we have successes, I mean, downtime, it's reduced, money is saved, and lives are saved, most importantly. Right. And for years and years, we've been gathering success stories, and Mark Paradise is here with us today to share some of what we've learned. And let me start out with something different then, what? too. I would like to start out with, you should submit your success stories to us. Oh, absolutely. We would like to get your stories and add them to our list. Yes. And, and the ones we're going to talk about today are not like total encompassing everything that ever happened good with Taproot. Right. It's just a few that we've got and we have on our website yes. and you can go read about. And then beyond that, we've got people who tell me success stories and I never get them documented and don't get them put on here. So I've got those two. And then we've got the success stories that people tell me, but they say, but you can't say anything about that. <laughs> And well, so the, that's understandable. The, and and it's, we don't want our competition yeah. to know what we're doing. <laughs> um, my boss would never approve this. The lawyers would never approve yeah. this, whatever. So if you have a success story, we'd like to hear it. Mm -hmm. And whatever one of those cases that are, we'd really like to put it on our website and let other people know about it so that they can learn from what you've done well and then apply it um, and other places to save lives and help other people in their jobs too. Yeah, absolutely. And if you if you submit them and come to the summit, you get an award. Yes. So that's always nice because we, we want to have you there because that's the, one of the greatest places to share our information. Well, Mark, let's dive into to what some of these are. I know we've recently did a blog article that we'll link to, and we had a video um, from last year's summit that we'll link to as well that tells some of our success stories. Well, I guess the first one I'd like to start out with, which is my favorite success story, is Skyline Mines, mm -hmm. and and. If I ever tell you about success stories, I probably always start off with this one because um, it was what it was an aha moment for me of saving people's mm -hmm. lives. And what happened is Skyline Mines was an underground mine. They were um, having lots of MSHA violations and they were having fatalities and injuries and they decided they were going to do business differently. And part of that was they had us come in and teach them how to do root cause analysis using Taproot. And they started doing that and they had dramatic success in reducing all the things they measure. And it was about maybe a year or a year and a half into it, the guy called me and I remember it was before Christmas. And he said, Mark, um, you know, we've, it's been a, a year or two since we've had a fatality now and we just had uh, a three people die in an accident. And I said, well, um, tell me about it. And he said, well, they were, he said it really wasn't a lost time accident because they really weren't at work. They were driving from home to a training session and they hadn't gotten to the training session but a drunk driver crossed the center line, hit him head on and all three people in the car died. Mm. And of course the drunk driver didn't die and so we're trying to do a root cause analysis on this and we're trying to figure out what the root cause of that is and what we could have done to prevent it. And so we went through all the things and, and the, the traffic report and all that kind of stuff. And really, they didn't have anything they could do to improve to prevent that accident. Mm -hmm. uh, it was totally the drunk driver's fault. Um, they were just innocent people right. who were in the wrong, wrong place, place at the wrong time. Yeah. But, but in doing this, after, it was after I got off the call that I realized what he said to me. And that was that they that in previous years they had two to three people die a year, and for a couple of years they hadn't had anybody die, and this was their first fatality since they'd started using Taproot, and, and that they'd stopped having fatalities right. because they were doing so well on improving safety, and I started thinking about that, and I started thinking about it from the point of view of. You know, there's I guess that maybe it had been three years they've been using Taproot at that point. And so, no fatalities, three years, two to three fatalities per year, that's six to nine people who were going home for Christmas that wouldn't have gone home yeah. otherwise. And, and that was just a, a boom, it really hit me. Um, and, and it was an emotional moment. And so that's been my favorite one ever yeah. since. I think I remember you telling that story. It was Christmas right. It was that. It was time. right. It was yeah. right before the Christmas party yeah. that I learned about this, and so I told everybody at the Christmas party about it. And I think it was a big moment for everybody in the company realizing what contributes. Because we what, think about we think right. about stopping injuries yeah. and that kind of thing, but you don't think about people going home to their Correct. family that would have been gone otherwise. Yeah. So then, 
And this was about the same time. Maybe it was the next summit we went to. I had a guy come up to me, and um, he was he said well he said I work at a small refinery. You may not remember you were up taught our course, and he said you know we've been using taproot and I don't remember how many years it was again since this. And he said we used to have fatalities. We'd kill one or two people a year, and we haven't had a fatality. I don't remember exactly how many years it's been. And this is not one of the documented ones. Right. This is one of the ones where I can't tell, can't tell. who it was. <laughs> and he said, but, but you know, we haven't had a fatality. And, and he said, that got me thinking. That got me thinking about how many people you train a year, how many places this is being used, and how many people's lives are being saved at all these different mm -hmm. facilities. He said, you may be saving dozens, hundreds, he said, maybe even more than that, people's lives a year, and you don't even know it. Right. So he said, I want to thank you. And I was like, blown yeah. away, because I hadn't thought about that that way either. So and then that's, your mind starts turning, kind of thinking Well, yeah, you start thinking about yeah. how many, uh, you know, how many people a year do we train? Well, not in a COVID year, but in a normal right. year, it's like 10,000 people. Right. And they're all over the world, and they're all applying tapper, and we've been doing that for well, probably 25 20, years yeah. we've been doing that. So you can start thinking that that's a whole lot of people trained. It is. And so then you start thinking about, well, think of all the impacts they're making out there. So I wanted I wanted to think of another one that was, that it's totally different. So mm -hmm. we've talked about saving lives. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're preventing injuries too. Absolutely. But how about making the workplace a better place to be and saving jobs? Mm -hmm. And we had some guys at a chemical plant, and I don't remember what they produced, but they made it in, a, it was a, a continuous process, and they had three shifts a day. And what houses starts out was, these five guys show up for a course that I'm teaching, a public course up in St. Louis. And we're teaching this public mm -hmm. course up in St. Louis, these five guys show up, they're from Houston. And I'm thinking, why are five guys from Houston up in St. Louis? We teach courses in Houston, public courses. All the time. <laughs> All the time, like almost every month. Yeah, exactly. And, and so why are they up here in, in uh, well, it was probably every other month. Yeah. But why are they up here? And so I meant to go ask them. I never got a chance. Mm -hmm. And they went home and I didn't hear another thing. Then about, phew, let's say, six months later, I'm teaching a course down in Orlando, a five-day course down in Orlando. Here's these same five guys in Orlando. And I'm thinking, wait a second, what's going on here? This is, this is sort of suspicious. <laughs> Same five guys, six months later, five day course mm -hmm. in Orlando. I got to get over to talk to them, find out what they're, where they got this unlimited budget to go wherever chance. they want. Now, see, I didn't think of, I really didn't think of St. Louis as a vacation destination. <laughs> I mean, there is the arch, but right. I don't know. That's not that no, much I of a draw to you. me. But Orlando, <laughs> I'm thinking, this is, this is yeah. obviously a boondoggle. But I didn't get a chance to talk to him again. Five day course, you would have figured I'd figured out, but I was busy, didn't get it done, and sure enough, they're gone. Yeah. Probably six, nine months later, we have the summit. Here these same five guys are at the summit. Now I gotta go you talk gotta to him. So I go up to one of the guys, his name was Jeremy Esquiville. And Jeremy, I said, Jeremy, you gotta tell me, where did you get the budget to go wherever you want to go and attend whatever training you want? He goes, oh, this, that's a good story. Let me tell you the story. He said, so we're at this plant and we were losing money. We were losing money big time and we got this notice from corporate that unless we changed, they were gonna shut us down. We we're all gonna lose our jobs. And he said, the plant manager, you can tell how long this ago was because we had paper newsletters back oh, in wow. those days. Yes. And he said, he got one of your newsletters or maybe a course flyer mm -hmm. and he, he read it and he called me in and said, I want you to put together a team, a couple maintenance guys, or a couple operators, a maintenance guy. I want you to get somebody from corporate um, and, and who's equipment reliability and you, and he was an engineer. And I want you to go to this course and see if you can come back and fix our problems. Because they'd, mm -hmm. they'd had all these experts hired to come in and fix their problems, right? But it hadn't been fixed. Wow. So he did that and that's how he ended up in the St. Louis course. He said they went back from the St. Louis course and he said they started doing an investigation every time they had a plant upset. Three shifts, three upsets, three investigations. What they found out really quickly was every shift was running the plant a different way. 
none of them were following the procedures. Right. They all had their own way of doing it. And so every shift turnover, they had to go from those bad people, the way they ran it, to the way <laughs> we ran it. And that would give you about, oh, I can't remember exactly how long it was. Let's say it took about 30 minutes mm -hmm. to shift production over to the new way of running it. And all the production from the old way to the new way, all that 30 mm -hmm. minutes had to be dumped while you got the plant set up for the new way you were going to run it, the way we do it, the way it's right. Right. And so then... Um, it's a lot of time. Well, it is. When you start taking <laughs> that every day, you lose yeah. an hour and a half of production. Right. Three shifts, hour and a half, every day of mm -hmm. lost production. And and so they figured this out and they said, okay, we got to do something about this. So they got the head guys from all four shifts, because mm -hmm. to have three rotating shifts, you got to have four different shifts. And they said, listen, here's the problem. You're all going to be fired unless you can come up with a solution. That's a good incentive. Because <laughs> we're all going to lose our jobs all of us, unless we not can just fix this. The individual shifts. Not just those three, four guys, but you guys right. are going to lose your job too. And so you've got to come up with a way. We've got to come up with one way to run this plant that's the same for everybody. And everybody's got to agree to do it that way. And so they did. They came up with a way. And they actually made the procedure then match the way they were doing it. Perfect. And, uh, and all of a sudden, they saved, and then you can figure it out what, what an hour and a half is out of 24, but it's a sizable percentage sure. of their, uh, you know, in, all, all straight to the bottom line because it was waste before, and now it's all good mm -hmm. production. Just getting everybody on the same so page. He so said, he said, once we did that, then we could start working on the real incidents that occurred. He said, because those were, there were so many of them, and they were so prevalent that you couldn't even tell what else was wrong because that was driving. He said, we went from losing money to making money right there. Wow. He said, then we started finding these other things and how to improve them. And, and he said, we were making good progress. He said, so I went to the boss and said, hey boss, they got this five day course, can we go to that? And he goes, well, sure. So they went to the five day course, they came back and applied some of that stuff and they find more problems mm -hmm. on how to solve them and how to solve them even better. And so then, then they, then they won the corporate award. So they had this award for the best quality improvement or something, right? That's that, pretty awesome going from going to be fired to getting the corporate award. Yes, it is. And he said, more awesome yet, they had a corporate jet fly down and pick up these two operators, a maintenance guy and Jeremy, and I guess the other guy was at headquarters already, fly them to New York for dinner with the CEO. This is a French company, so the French guy flew over. He didn't want to fly to Podunk, Texas for dinner. <laughs> he, didn't right. go, he didn't want to go have a McDonald's dinner. He wanted to go to a New York big fancy restaurant. And so he, uh, he flew over, and they had dinner with the CEO, and um, they all got patted on the back, and they got presented this award, and they thought, wow, this is great. So then they, when they got back, they said, hey, they got the summit coming up. Can we go can to we that? Go to and how can you say no when right, you just got the exactly. big corporate award? So they sent him to the summit, and, and that was good. And that's where I met mm -hmm. Jeremy, and he told me the story. So that was all good. Um, and, and that, I guess, is the end of the success story. That's, that's a wonderful success story, though. You want to hear the bad part? What? There's a bad part to oh, the no. success story. I don't think with, I've heard this. Because with success can come failure right yes. along with it. And so this was their failure. So because they won this big award, somebody at corporate found out what they were doing. And this guy was the guy who was in charge of how they did root cause analysis. Mm -hmm. And they weren't using the corporate standard. They were using something else. <coughs> so they got, he got mad. And so he went down and told them, you can't use this Tappert stuff anymore. You've got to use this corporate stuff. And, and I know because he called me and told me about it. For, and... And he said, you know, I don't know. How frustrating. I, I, I suppose we're going to have to at least turn it in in the forms they present us with. But we're going to still keep ta using Taproot. Yeah. We just can't tell them we're doing that. Yeah. But I always thought it should have gone the other Isn't way, right? Something? It should have gone. They've had such a huge success here at this one facility. They start doing it all over the company. Hmm. But sometimes... That's, Sometimes there's corporate politics involved and it doesn't spread out and go everywhere. That is an interesting twist to the story because like one of the things we deal with a lot is, you know, we deal with individual sites a lot and right. things like that and they will go and they kind of are doing their own thing and they'll do taproot and things like that and their upper management doesn't really know what's going on and, you know, a lot of times 
you, if it is undercutting them, they don't like that. So they kind of like to be in on the decision making, well, probably especially if it's a success. A <laughs> lot of times, okay, so uh, one of our original customers, I'll put it that way, was a big oil company. And we got working there because a guy at corporate saw some stuff I was writing about mm -hmm. and he sent that out to the refineries. And one of the guys at the refinery tried what we were doing, liked it. I got invi invited to one of their conferences and we started doing it eventually at mm -hmm. all their refineries. It became the refining standard. And you know, you would have thought, well, it'll spread to the rest of the oil company too, but right. it didn't. Yeah. Because the exploration and production guys we're not going to do what those refining guys are doing. That's one of those, <laughs> it wasn't invented here, we can't do that. Strangely enough, at a different major oil company, the exploration and production guys got on first, and they did it, and then the refining guys said, well, we're not going to do that. That's for exploration and production. Yeah. That's not for refining. So people a lot of times will think, if it wasn't invented here, um, we're not going to do it because it, we got to invent it if it's well, going to be Well, people don't there. want to think that they weren't doing the right thing to start with well, and, and that they you, can improve. Exactly <laughs> right. If you're the guy who said we've got to do it this way and somebody else comes yeah. up with a better idea, that makes you look bad. Sure. So it's hard for you to admit that that may be a better idea and it's more like we're going to bump heads and we're not going to, we're not going to. We play ball with those new yeah, guys. Yeah, and we talk a lot about that um, in Taproot and in some of these episodes that we do because communication and er getting everybody on board is just so important to the whole entire thing. And we hear people all the time wanting to standardize across their companies and things like that so that competition mentality um, is is not good for the whole Well, you know, there's program. different kinds, there's different kinds yeah. of companies. And some companies standardize from corporate and the, the word comes mm -hmm. down. Others of them, they're um, decentralized mm -hmm. and a single facility or maybe a, a, a division can do one thing mm -hmm. and a different division is going to do another thing and it's almost like they compete mm -hmm. with each other, right? So it really does, it, it depends on the company as to how they're going to implement and um, how and we, they're going to do this. We do see that a lot and you know sometimes a, a corporation will have a a system that they want to have in place and but they will give some leeway to certain areas to if they want to use something else and those people they hang on to taproot like it's just solid well, gold I guess the I don't want to say the main way but they always say it's good if people take your product with you when they mm -hmm. go other places and, they do. and a lot of times <laughs> we've get people who you know, move to a new job, get a promotion, well, not a promotion, it'd be they go to a new company as mm -hmm. a promotion and they bring Taproot with yeah. us and that's how we get to the next place. So happens a lot. That's a that's a good thing when your when your clients are are so loyal that whenever they go someplace, which brings up another one, a lot of times people um, implement Taproot and they have this great success, mm -hmm. but when they go someplace else, a new person comes in and it's the, well, I can't do that. That's what the old people did. I have to bring in my own programs. Right. So you always have the program with that. In fact, we talk about that in implementation sometimes. You've got to have succession planning so that when one person changes out, you don't change all the good yeah. programs out. You keep what's good there so that you don't have this um, new all guy, all break. new programs. Yeah. Right? All of a sudden, there's this break. Yeah, because you know I know five whys, and that must be a really good thing. So I want to do five whys. I got a video on that too. <laughs> <laughs> we can link to. Yep. No, it's it's so important, and you know we are lucky to have great clients that when they do leave companies, they they go and they implement Taproot brand new at their new companies. And one of the things we like about that is we can start from scratch with a lot of those companies and, you know, just start them off on the right foot from the very beginning and that everybody's super happy. Um, you know, back in the day, the way you found out about Taproot was you had to go to a course. I mean, that was pretty much it. Go to a course. We'll talk to you a little bit on the phone, but you go to find a public out course. About, find out about what meaning. Taproot's all about. Okay, okay. Yeah. How to use Taproot. Yes. Okay. And now it's so easy for people because they can contact us and we can do an overview for them. Um, really important and it's really been very helpful to a lot of our clients. Um, their programs have improved quite a bit when they're working with us as a partner um, with their company. And we can, you know, like he was saying a minute ago about, you know, 
corporate didn't know and you know all that com miscommunication and stuff we're happy to talk to them um, we were happy to get you together a team uh, your leadership and show them what Taproot's all about so you don't have to be running around the background trying to to explain it to everybody so it's more efficient if you let us explain it yep. <laughs> it certainly is well i would still say it's good to go to a course oh absolutely because it's really good to know what you're talking about oh absolutely um, when you're going to try to sell senior management on you know it's good to have somebody in the company absolutely. who's applied this and can say see this is our old investigation yeah. uh, there, there's another success story i don't know how many times um who was i talked to let's just say it was an agricultural mm -hmm. company and they had used something that was equivalent of five Ys, mm -hmm. and they adopted Taproot. And so one of the first things they did to see how it worked was they took a real investigation um, and they did it twice. Mm -hmm. They did it with the old system and did it with the new system to see what difference it would make. And what they found was they did find a couple things in the old system but they found so much more, so many questions they hadn't asked before, and so many reasons for that incident that they would have never found out about and would have never fixed. And so that, I guess it's a success story to say, wow, look at how much more we learn using Taproot than the old way we used to do it. We love for people to do that. Um, in some of our courses, you bring an incident with you that you're gonna work through, bring one that you've already run through some other system, and then compare it with the results you're gonna get in the class. Well, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. They're gonna have know. more causal factors. Well, no, <laughs> worse than that. Worse. They're gonna go, they're gonna go, holy cow, look at all these <laughs> blank spaces on my snap chart where we didn't ask questions we, we should have asked. We did not get all the information. and. I can't even get to root causes because I didn't even get a complete yeah. what happened in yeah. the old investigation because I just honed in on whatever thing I liked here and didn't look at the rest of it. And oh my goodness, I got to go back and redo When you this. get the whole picture, it's amazing. And I got to go back. <laughs> I don't know how many people said, I've got to go back. I mean, I, I made some assumptions here and put things together to get it done in the course, but I got to go back and do this for real. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way to put it. Yep. <laughs> Let's do the real investigation now. Um, if you don't know how to do Taproot, we can help you with that. Um, we Even now, we have courses uh, going on, uh, public courses. And even now. Even now, with uh, the co we're doing the social distancing and putting the safety protocols all in place, and they're going very well. And, and if it isn't going very well and they shut down the place we're going to do it, we don't hold the course. So Exactly. Uh, yeah, we definitely want to keep everybody healthy, um, but we've got to keep everybody safe, too. Yep. Um, that, that didn't go away when COVID came along. Nope. We start, there's a lot of people out there still working. Yes, there are. And, and, and there's some frustration out there for people who can't get together and do these um, courses. So um, some of our Taproot trained uh, people out there, we've been having webinars, uh, supplemental webinars that you can find on our website. Uh, we have been doing some on-site courses. Again, everybody's using those protocols to keep everybody safe. So we can take care of this for you. Um, you can just reach out to us at info at You can go to our website at taproot.com, go to the courses page and you can see where our courses are happening. If you want to see what Taproot's about um, and you want your management to see what it's about, contact us and we'll do a webinar for you. And we can kind of go through the methodology, spend about an hour talking to you, seeing what your needs are, what your goals are, and how we can help you reach them. Mark, I want more success stories. It's up to them. <laughs> It's up to them. They got to give them to us. It is. It's up to you. Like you said, uh, if you've got some success stories, email them. Um, email you, mark at taproot.com. There we go. <laughs> there we or go. Or just send it to the info at taproot.com address. <laughs> yeah. That way somebody will read it. No, we love to read those. And uh, Summit's coming up June 14th through the 18th here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Coming up next year. Yeah, next June, 14th through 18th. <laughs> somebody might watch this any year, you know. Oh, that's true. These last forever out there. 2021. Yes. And it's Knoxville, Tennessee. Bring your success story and we'll give you an award. How All about right. that? That sounds great. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Please sure and hit the notification bell to find out when we're going to have videos and subscribe to our channel. And, and like us. And like, like if you us. like what Mark had to say today. And what is the other thing? The bell. The bell. Get it at the yeah. bell. Yeah. The doopley do. Yep. It's Alex's, the doopley -doo? new, <laughs> that's Alex's new word. All right. Ring the doopley do. Okay. I thought it was a bell. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>